All right, good morning. Let's go over today's trade plan. So in the overnight session, buyers uh, maintained control early in the session and pushed uh, ES up towards the 82 area that we talked about in yesterday's recap. Um, NQ also started heading higher. We wanted to hold above 35.90 and then ideally get above 3,600. And, uh, you know, that idea played out in NASDAQ. And then, of course, you know, uh, the buyers continued pushing ES higher as well and hit 82, which was a uh, major upside objective in the short term. Um, at this point, uh, you know, we want to see that strength continue in NASDAQ because right now the red flag that we have is the fact that TF um, has failed to take out the 1155 level, uh, which was this uh, recent high from a couple of days ago. Um, you know, so far it has failed to take that level out and uh, you know, that is a, um, at least one reason for caution at these, uh, you know, higher prices as we approach, uh, you know, the all-time high. So, uh, you know, the all-time high at 92 half, we're, you know, we got within 10 points of it in the overnight session. And the other markets are still, uh, you know, quite a ways off their highs. Um, and for that reason, you know, it, it does make sense to be a bit careful and make sure that, the other markets are continuing to at least rise or at the very minimum they're not um, you know giving up those gains and heading lower um, in order to uh, take you know any long setups in ES at these uh, higher prices so as far as today goes um, you know on the econ calendar we don't have any uh, major catalyst scheduled for later this morning um, on the earnings side Microsoft and Amazon report earnings after the close I don't think they're gonna have quite the effect that Apple had yesterday where, you know, it kept the market stuck in a six-point range. Um, I think, you know, today we can still um, get a decent range. It's just going to depend on how well the other markets are able to hold up and maintain their gains here and then actually continue pushing higher. Uh, because, uh, you know, in order for ES to really push beyond 82, um, you know, we do want to see NQ trading above the 36.12 to 36.15 area um, at the very minimum. And... Um, you know, if that happens, then there's a shot that, you know, ES could go up to 85.75 to 87.75. That's the next major inflection point uh, beyond the 82 area in ES. And, uh, you know, we can still get responsive sellers there on first test. Uh, but we, as far as shorting that zone goes, um, you know, ideally, the other markets are also hitting their own uh, resistance areas. When ES tests initial resistance, you know, then it would make it a higher odds short setup whereas uh, you know if the other markets start rallying off the uh, open then you'll have to be a bit careful um, at initial resistance even because the all-time high is right above it and uh, you know 90 half to 92 half uh, I'm not expecting that zone to get taken out today um, you know I think we will continue holding and balancing below that zone uh, because there really isn't any major catalyst uh, today that can really drive prices to a new all-time high so in the event that we do get up to 90 half to 92 half, um, especially if we don't really balance too much ahead of it, uh, then, you know, we can expect sellers to be active and we can expect some, uh, you know, profit taking near the all-time high. Um, so we'll keep that idea in mind. In NQ, we have resistance, uh, you know, above the 36.12 to 15 area. The next inflection point in NQ is 36.40 to 43, followed by 36.54 to 36.58. So, uh, you know, those are the resistance spots in NASDAQ. Um, in TF, you know, we really want to see TF trading above that 11.55 to uh, really support the continuation scenario in uh, the S&P and NQ. If, uh, you know, TF um, puts in a breakdown uh, and starts heading lower, then that would be a red flag for the other markets. And ES at that point could uh, you know, pull back to uh, the gap fill, 73, and uh, potentially 68 quarter to 70 quarter. Now, I expect responsive buyers on first test of initial support, but that 68 quarter to 70 quarter zone is very important at this point, and uh, we are going to be using that as the bull bear zone as well. So, you know, that's that's a very critical inflection point for buyers in S&P, and, uh, you know, if we get a break, below 68 quarter or 70 quarter, uh, you know, that would be a major red flag for buyers. And, um, you know, at that point, 
the control could shift from the buy side to the sell side and result in uh, some continued uh, selling pressure down towards uh, the 64 half gap, HVN, 61 to 63 zone, and potentially um, even 56 half to 57 half. Now, you know, we would have to see a pickup in volume for that type of move to happen because at that point, you know, you'd be pushing a pretty, uh, pretty wide range and you'd want to see some higher volume in order for that move to take place. But, uh, you know, right now, the main focus is still going to be on the long side above initial support. Um, you know, we're open to the short setups, but it's only if the other markets start breaking down. Um, you know, as long as they even maintain their gains, uh, you know, we'll have to be careful shorting this market because S&P has been leading uh, the markets higher so far. It has been the stronger market. So, uh, you know, we don't want to uh, get involved on the short side too early in the market that has been leading and has been the stronger one. But, uh, you know, if the other markets start putting a breakdown and uh, we start seeing some pretty decent selling pressure in NQ and TF, you know, at that point we'll be more open to, uh, you know, shorting pops in the S&P as well. So those are really the main ideas heading into the day. You know, let's see how well the buyers were able to maintain control today. And uh, we will take it from there.